our rights come, no, hang on, I'll, I'll simplify this even further. So our rights are inherent. Mm -hmm. By being born into the world, we're born with rights. We have the right, we have many freedoms afforded to us. What happens is that there's a parallel world that's kind of born, we're born into as well, and that's the world of entities, of non-living. And that's created for us to, um, I guess, unwillingly move into, but we can always at any time straddle that in the world of the living, which is the, the world of freedoms and rights. So when we're dealing with law, uh, there's every law comes from the Bible. Now, whether you, you're religious or you're not, or you think the Bible's like the crappest book in the world or it's the best book in the world, it doesn't matter. That's what our laws come from. So that's having understanding of it helps you to stand for your rights because your rights come from the Bible, essentially. So we have a hierarchy in the world, and that is that there is Yahweh or the creator. The creator created man. Man created government, and then government created law, uh, like rules, legislations, regulations, acts, codes, statutes, all those sorts of things. And that order is important because that's the order that uh, of the hierarchy. So man is actually above government. Man is well above statutes, codes, and acts because that's what a government created. Man is only not above the creator. So the only two laws that govern us are love thy neighbor, which is on that equal level, your fellow man, and love thy creator, which is above you. Government and regulations and everything are just like, they don't apply to us, but they apply to creatures of statute. So for you to go from the, uh, the status of a living man or woman, and you put yourself in the status of the non-living, below the living man, below government, then you come under governmental regulation because you're now a creature of statutory rule. Now, so the question then is, well, how do you do that? Like, I don't want to do that. Why would I do that? Well, you do it unwillingly. First of all, by answering to a name. Second of all, by answering questions. Third, by consenting. And sometimes you consent by assent. And assent means an unconscious decision to agree. So if an offer is put into place, like we're going to force vaccinate you or we're going to remove your ability to travel or whatever, if you remain silent, then from biblical principles and therefore by law, uh, you assent, which means an unconscious decision to agree, which means you can't argue with that. You have to speak up, you have to non-consent and you have to uh, stand up for your rights. So when you say that you don't even know what your rights are, your rights are essentially all freedoms, all rights. Um, they can't be taken away either. That's law. Like our rights are inalienable. You can only willingly by unconsciously not knowing go into that world of, um, of rule and regulation and everything like that. Do you follow that so mm -hmm. far? Or yeah. I got into it many years ago because I just always knew. I was, even from getting like parking fines when, well, I see my parents getting a parking fine. I'm like, how can you be, that makes no sense. And the amount that it is, it's like just mm -hmm. how they come up with that amount. And I'm like, I just, I could always see that that was oppressive and wrong. I didn't know what the right answer was or how or why, but I just knew, I just always knew that that wasn't right. So uh, it always just, and I don't like people, I don't like unfairness. I don't like people bullying people. So I just, I just kept following trails until I managed to find the straw man and then, you know, the, uh, the corporatocracy of the world and all that. And then I started to learn all about law from there. But um, it can be simplified a lot when you say, you know, it's like, well, there's, there's these regulations and these acts. You don't need to know any of them. Like I pretty much don't know any acts at all because I, I know the um, overriding principle, which is that an act only applies to a person, a creature of statute. Under government, into the world of statute, a, a act only applies to a person, which is an entity. No act across the world applies to a man or a woman. So therefore, so the question then might be, well, how, does, how is that relevant and how does that work? That works because of one principle. In the world of commerce, which is what we're governed by, we're only governed by commerce, in the world of commerce, there are creditors and there are debtors. They're the only two things that exist. So a creditor is the one that asks questions and a debtor answers questions. That's, that's basically the rule. So therefore, I don't need to know anything in an act. If you start telling me that there's an act that applies, that governs me for some way, I only ask you questions. They really cry. So, well, that's an act, right, that you're referring to. I say, well, look, am I a man? You might go, oh, no, it's an act. I don't need to answer that. No, I said, I didn't, I didn't ask you if you needed to answer it. That's not the answer. That's a yes or no answer. My question is, am I a man? So I'm always pulling it back and I'm the one directing the conversation. If I, and if you try to pull it away again, it's like, well, look, this applies to everybody. No, I didn't ask that, Kai. 
I asked her a simple question. I said, yes or now? No, for the third or f- third and final time, I always got to ask in threes, for the third and final time, mm-hmm. are we in agreement that I'm a man? If you don't answer, I'll answer for you. you. I don't have to answer that question. Okay, you don't. But you're incriminating yourself. So I've asked you three times, I'll answer for you. I am a man. We have agreement. Now you're quoting an act there, Kai. How does an act apply to a man? I've read through hundreds of things. I can't see anyone that applies to a, a man. So how does an act apply to a man? So then yeah, they can't answer that question in a courtroom or against anyone. They can't answer that question. So I don't need to know what's in the act. I just need to know who I am. And that's the fundamental principle for all of this is that once you know who you are and what you are, then you don't need to know so much of the law. You're always the one that is directing. You're, you're asking the questions as a creditor and then you assert your status in the world of commerce as a creditor. And then you're, never, you're not a debtor anymore. We're, we're tricked into being debtors. We answer to being a name. We answer questions in general. We, uh, we do those two things, basically. It makes us a debtor in the world mm-hmm. of commerce. We want to become creditors. And that's how. It's literally knowing who you are. Mm-hmm. And so no matter what comes your way, it comes through that filter of knowing who you are. It's like, oh, there's this new act or whatever that allows police to come into your home and take whatever they want, take your phone, your laptop, whatever. It's like, well, no, there isn't because I know what I am and who I am. I know that's an act. It doesn't apply to me. So anybody that tries to force that onto me, I hold them accountable. And when it turns out that they're making claims that are unfounded, that are vexatious and frivolous and that are against me, well, now I can counterclaim them because that's a false claim. And under commerce, under law, I can counter claim against a false claim against me for damages. So it's, uh, it can be very powerful when you understand the principles. Again, it's not important to learn the actual laws. You just have to understand the principles.